Having navigated the highs and lows of Infinite LaGrange for two seasons, it seemed like a good moment to pause, take stock, and share my thoughts on the game. In this video, which is kindly sponsored by the team over at Infinite LaGrange, we seek to answer the question, should you download it? I'm Farrister, and my channel is all about giving you useful or interesting content around games, including most recently Infinite LaGrange. If you're new to the channel, be sure to take a look around for some other Infinite LaGrange videos, and perhaps consider subscribing. That helps you to be notified of future videos as they go live, and helps me to grow the audience. A lot of work has been put into developing the story behind the game, the clean in-game client user interface, and the frankly impressive graphics for a mobile game. And I don't mean to sidestep any of that or the work that has gone into it, but in the interests of time I'd love to focus on the actual gameplay mechanics, and how enjoyable Infinite LaGrange can be to play. First of all, although there is a PC client, Infinite LaGrange is designed to be a mobile game, and the game mechanics are built around that concept. That means it lends itself much more to regularly playing for short periods of time, rather than long sessions of hours on end. And that's a really important distinction to point out, as it changes how to perceive a lot of the mechanics. For example, the fleet action points regenerate over time to a cap, meaning you can only perform a certain number of different fleet actions until you need to take a break. There are lots of different resources in game, but the most important one is that unpublished one. Time. So if you're looking for something you can pick up a little and often to occupy yourself with, Infinite LaGrange lends itself really well to that. That brings me to the second point about this game, which is the free-to-play model. I find some of the Steam reviews a little unfair to this point, as many complain about the game being pay-to-win, which doesn't match up with a lot of the App Store reviews, or my own experience. I think the reason for this goes back to my first point, the way people are trying to play the game. Infinite LaGrange lends itself really well to players who want to build up their spacefaring empire over the long term, and by long term I mean across many weeks and months of different seasons, not by how many hours are spent in-game. In my experience, and I'm well aware this video is sponsored, there are some advantages to spending real money on some of the packs or options, but they are not game-breaking advantages. In fact, the so-called premium currency in the game, Proxima Coins, are available to all players, and part of the game is about how to manage that balance. Having played for two seasons now, I did spend a small amount in Season 1, the kind of money most apps in the App Store cost anyway, just to help boost research, but other than that, I'm at the end of Season 2, with a really good ship selection and loadout. So, in my experience, it's really not pay to win. And in that same experience, I find there are generally two types of player in the game. The first is the farmer, somebody who wants to log in, play, gather resources to grow their empire, and unlock new ships. And the second is the more competitive, who wants to actively participate in the events across the server, and probably engage in player versus player combat to achieve that. In my opinion, Infinite LaGrange does a great job of balancing both groups. Farmers can get their combat with various AI pirates who float around, as well as mine resources close to home base, maybe even relocating to a very quiet sector if they want to be undisturbed. And for those wanting to be more involved in the competitive elements, the city combat is a really good mechanic for encouraging player versus player conflict, with an advantage for participating in it, and an advantage for coordinating efforts with other players in a guild or union. It also helps to give each season a sense of progression. Research crates are the closest thing in-game to loot boxes. They hold a random chance of unlocking new ships to build, and for the most part, that random chance is really small. Like, 1% kind of small. 
Again, the temptation is then to assume people have to pay money to get what they want, whereas actually, it's important to remember the first point. This game is about time. A 1% chance means you're likely to unlock a certain ship within 100 days, if you play a little bit every day. So it's really important to think long term, especially since the research crates take a little time to unlock, so aren't instant gratification mechanisms. Alright, so all of that considered, is Infinite Lagrange worth downloading? Well, I think if you're looking for something you can pick up a few times a day for short bursts, then it's free to download and try out, and you can come to your own conclusion. I always think there's no substitute for trying it yourself and making your own mind up. I have a new player guide on the channel if you're looking for tips on getting started. Have you been playing Infinite Lagrange? I'd love to read your thoughts in the comments. Thanks again to the team over at Infinite Lagrange for sponsoring this video, and if you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that like button. Otherwise, as always, thank you for watching.